Welcome back everyone. This is the third in our three-part series about the wines of Rias Baixas. Today we're going to look at all the great dishes that go with the different styles of Albarino wines. First we'll explore the local food culture of Rias Baixas, a gastronomic destination teeming with amazing local fish, seafood, cheeses, meat dishes that are served everywhere from its market stalls to its Michelin starred restaurants. And then we'll give you some great pairing suggestions that you can try at home. Thanks for joining me. My name is Jackie Blisa. I am a wine writer, educator, and a master of wine. Albarino is a sommelier favorite around the world for white wine pairing. It has high natural acidity, vibrant, pure flavors, and a lovely dry mineral finish, which makes it great for sipping on its own or for pairing with a wide variety of dishes. In Rio Spicious, the classic pairing for Albarino is, of course, the local seafood. The port of Vigo is the leading fishing port in all of Europe. Galicia supplies Spain with all of its seafood and exports all over the world. Vigo is also well known for its famous Calle de la Ostra, where tourists can enjoy fresh oysters shucked to order. Mussels grow in abundance on the large wooden platforms that line the Rio de Arosa, the region's largest estuary. Clams, razor clams, cockles, sea urchins, and barnacles named percebes are also quite common here. These briny flavors are the perfect match for the more taut, saline, light-bodied styles of Albarino. Pulpo a Galega, a dish of boiled octopus served with olive oil and paprika, is a particularly popular dish. Fleshier white fish and seafood like lobster or scallops work beautifully with the fuller body styles of Albarino that maybe see longer lees aging or even some barrel maturation. In fact, the scallop shell is the symbol of the Camino de Santiago Trail, which really reflects how important marine life is to the Galician culture. While seafood is king, the region offers a wealth of hearty meat stews and empanadas and great local tapas. A favorite is the pimientos de padron, a dish of fried green peppers that is really nicely tempered by the juicy fruit and bright acidity of lighter albariños. Galicia is also renowned for its cheeses and has a number of protected origins, like queijo de titia, a soft, creamy cow's milk cheese that goes equally well with the fruitier and the creamier styles of Albarino. Albarino's stylistic diversity really gives it universal appeal. Sauvignon Blanc fans will like the high, nervy acidity and taut character of lighter Albarinos. Pinot Grigio fans might get behind the softer, rounder, fruitier styles of Albarino. And Chardonnay lovers will enjoy the fuller bodied, more textural Albarinos made with the long lees aging and the barrel maturation. Because of this diversity, Albarino can pair with a wide range of dishes. Lighter styles are great for summer patio sipping or for serving with salads or sushi. More medium bodied Albarinos that are a little bit more textural with some lees aging are great with. Um, fish or pasta in a cream-based soft or soft cheeses. And the fuller-bodied oak-matured Albarinos work really well with roasted poultry. They bring out the earthier notes and that fruitiness would counterbalance, for example, your Thanksgiving turkey and stuffing really nicely. Also, don't be afraid to play around with some subtly spiced dishes. That overt fruit, those peachy, sometimes tropical notes that you find on many Albarinos will really temper that spice nicely. So things like fish tacos, ceviche, pad thai, these would all be great options. So the first wine we're going to be tasting today is Vigne Carten, and this is from the Terras de la Tanio, and this is a family-owned winery in Valdosalnes. Vigne Carten was founded in 1977, so this wine is made with some 20-year-old vines. It's 100% Albarino. Here they've done partial malolactic fermentation to really soften up that mid palate and long aging on the lees. It's got really bright lemon and apricot notes on the nose, on the palate. It's got fresh acidity, but you can feel that softness in the mid palate, that smoothness, and then it finishes dry with that very subtle salinity that we love from Val de Salmes. 
The second wine that we're going to be tasting today is the Bodegas Aslaxas. So the Aslaxas is one of the oldest wineries and this one is located in the Condado de Lutea in actually quite a warm microclimate. You got some 30 year old vines here that are planted on terraces, granite based soils. You really get some intense stone and tropical fruit notes here and slightly earthy undertones. It's got crisp acidity, it's moderately firm, about medium bodied, it's got those lovely sort of wet stone tingly notes on the middle of the palate, very dry on the finish, lifted with that juicy bright acidity. The third wine that we're going to be trying today is from Bodegas Atis. And here the Farreña brothers work with French consultant Jean-Francois Ebrard to really focus on terroir driven wines that are expressive of the different plots around Rias Baixas. It is a 100% Albarino grown on sandy and granite soils with 50 year old vines on average. So you can see a deeper golden color here reflective of that oak aging. And you've really got a beautifully intense nose with that lovely peach coming through, some lemon, some of that creamy buttery notes, and then underneath it some refreshing kind of anise and marzipan notes. On the palate it's really really bright and lively, medium in body, subtle creamy layered texture, and then a very dry lifted finish. If you want a helpful tip for finding Rhea Spicious wines in wine stores, just look for the Rhea Spicious sticker under the back label. This is affixed to every bottle of Rhea Spicious wines and guarantees the origin. This wraps up our three part series on the wines of Rhea Spicious. If you like this video, please share widely. Feel free to send me a comment and grab yourself a bottle of Albarino. Until next time, salut! <laughs>